Hi BookTube, I'm here today with my review of Cockroach by Robbie Hodge. Okay, so this was a selection for Canada Reads this month, and, uh, spoiler alert, it came in second place. Um, it was defended by Samantha B, who you might know from The Daily Show. Um, and I think she did a great job of showing why every Canadian, and I think everybody, um, regardless of their nationality, should read Cockroach. It has been translated into, I believe she said, 27 different languages. Um, so it is available in whatever language you want to read it in. So Cockroach is a story of an unnamed immigrant who comes from an unnamed country that we presume is Middle Eastern to live in Montreal. Um, but he comes there and he finds that he's still embroiled in the poverty and hunger and violence that he's trying to escape from. He deals with a slew of mental health issues, and after he tries to commit suicide, he is placed in government-mandated therapy. And that actually serves um, as, a tool to, as a tool for his flashbacks. And we see, you know, lots of, of what he suffered through there. A uh, big part of this book is that he believes he is part cockroach. Um, and he uses his cockroachiness uh, to steal into other people's places. And there he'll maybe make himself a sandwich, he'll listen to the radio, and then he'll steal a, a memento of some sort, maybe love letters or a pair of slippers. And then he subtly brags about it to the person he's stealing from, because he steals from people he knows. Um, and there's a girl. <laughs> Of course. Um, I like this quote that I'm going to read uh, for you right now. Yes, I am poor. I am vermin, a bug. I'm at the bottom of the scale, but I still exist. So, I really felt that this was a powerful book. Um, not only for, for immigration, but also for mental health, which is very... Um, which is a very important issue uh, to me. Um, I saw a lot of reviews saying that they didn't like how the end the pace picks up, um, but I really found that that actually reflected the action that's going on in the book. Um, so as the action starts to pick up, your reading pace starts to pick up and you really, you know, you're experiencing the same thing as the character because you're really inside his mind throughout the whole book. Obviously, this book has been influenced by um, Kafka, um, Dostoevsky, and other existentialist philosophers. Um, but I think, unlike Kafka, unlike his character, we find that our narrator actually embraces his cockroach nature. He, that's what he identifies as. So there's a lot of dirty grittiness to this book. I mean, obviously the title is even called Cockroach, which is kind of off-putting. Um, so I think he, he deals with that really well in his very beautiful poetic language. Um, for example, the character kind of becomes obsessed with various liquids and how they drain. Um, for example, he describes urine as a golden thread of celebration, a kite string of salvation and rebirth. Um, and it's beautiful imagery, but he's talking about pee. Um, so we see that a lot of the book. There's a lot of duality within it. We see a lot of the human, what it means to be human versus what it means to be a cockroach uh, for the character. Um, a lot of Montreal versus the old world. Um, that it comes from dark versus light, and that, you know, cockroaches are afraid of light, and he actually gets a literal fear of light at one point. And again, life versus death. There's one point where he says people don't immigrate for a better life, they immigrate for a better death. 
and that was very uh, profound, I found. So we do have the mental health issue, and I found that Robbie Hodge's way with the, the language, the, the way he flows, and the way that um, he weaves everything between the narrator's um, lucid periods and his delusions is just so smooth that you don't really know what to believe is true. You, you don't know whether to believe if he actually does turn into a cockroach, or if he's actually stealing things, or, you know, even question whether the end scene um, whether that actually happens or not. You don't know what's real in this book. And I really like that because I really like unreliable narrators and characters that you really don't like. Um, I, you know, you feel sympathy for someone that you would otherwise not take a second glance at. Um, that you would maybe even despise because of, of their actions and you really get to sympathize with them. And, and get to see what what's, it really is like being them. Um, so, I thought this book actually had a very Canadian feel. Uh, it takes place in Montreal. Uh, I think he depicts it very well, the underside of, of Montreal. Um, he flows really nicely uh, at times between French and English. Um, but don't worry if you're not a native French speaker. Um, because uh, there are translations provided by him as well. Um, and it's basically, it's a story of Canada because Canada is made up of immigrants and this is the story of an immigrant and what it was like coming to Canada. So overall I say if you're looking for a very kind of fast-paced um, plot, then I, I don't think you should read this because it is very slow in the first uh, four parts. Um, but if you're intrigued by maybe like a psychological look at a man with multiple mental illnesses written in a very poetic and, and dreamy language, then you should definitely, definitely read this book.